Time now for sports on 104.7 The Cave. Here's Ned Reynolds. Mike, the intern, Ned Reynolds, in the studio on a Thursday morning. You know, it is crazy to me. You and I dog the media quite a bit on this show. And uh, <laughs> it the first thing I saw was, Eric Bieniemy, he's back with the Kansas City Chiefs. And I'm like, what? They they got him back on the, on the staff? That's crazy. No, he just talked to the team. But the media turns it into he's already back with the organization. This and they do crazy. it in the most misleading way with stories exactly the way you portray it right there. Back with them. Folks, and I'll tell you, somebody really uh, flubbed this up, too. He met with the team prior to the AFC Championship game with the uh, Baltimore Ravens. That's two weeks ago. And they're just getting to it now. So, yeah, they did have a discussion. Uh, who knows what was who accomplished, if anything, only the Chiefs and Eric B. Enemy know that. I doubt very much that anything was, because are there really any openings on the team? This man was the offensive coordinator for the Chiefs. Well, Mike Nagy is now, and they're in the Super Bowl. Now, may, may not have been as offensively high-powered as they had been, but is that reason to jettison somebody? Probably not. So we'll see what happens. There have been teams talking with them. That is recorded Pittsburgh Steelers, Las Vegas Raiders, and probably some others. But he did talk with the Chiefs and gave them the pep talk, and that's a pretty good deal. Supposedly, a lot of the guys in the room got goosebumps hearing him, and I, that's what I've been saying. I mean, it, you know, we got these incredibly awesome offensive minds like Andy Reid and player coaches like Spags. You got defensive players in tears just talking about him, and that's a, that's a coach you want. The players are willing to do anything they can for but you also, you know, the enemy brought something to that locker room we've missed this season, and I'm glad he was able to give him the fire uh, in Baltimore a couple weeks ago. Hopefully, he can make the trip out to Los Angeles to do it again for us. Yeah, but keep the in game mind, on Mike, Sunday. one one key item is he left the Chiefs. Oh, yeah. The Chiefs didn't leave him. No, of course. But you know, if he wants to be head coach, he's got to do what he's got to do. I understand that. Um, Tiger Woods actually getting back out on the course. How's that going to go? It will be next weekend that he tees it up, and this will be on, well, as a matter of fact, it's a $20 million first prize, and this is a tournament that Woods hosts. He is the, uh, the well, really not not the literal host for it, but he is his name is associated with it. It's the Genesis Open in Los Angeles, the old Los Angeles Open, and it's one of the big ones with the $20 million first prize. He is going to play in that. He will not play this weekend out in Phoenix, <laughs> and the Phoenix tournament is a little bit different from most of them because the gallery is allowed to make a lot of noise and throw things and create a lot of disturbance where mostly, in fact, 99.9% of the time on the PGA Tour. That's frowned upon, not in Phoenix. So the pros have <laughs> a, bit of a, a bit of a culture shock when they go there. But that tournament is this weekend. Genesis Open with Tiger Woods will be next weekend. Interesting to see it. And uh, next weekend after this weekend, I'm definitely going to need some naps. So that's uh, good to know that's coming in my future. Last but not least, can you explain this all sports app, which is scheduled for next fall? I wish I could. It is, <laughs> it is so fragmentary that it's a little bit difficult. It is going to kick off in the fall, according to the folks who are putting this thing together. There's still a, a long road to go before it becomes a reality. But it's what it is, in essence, folks, is for people who stream, you will have an app. Uh, it hasn't gotten a name yet, nor has there been a fee established for it. But this app will include virtually everything that involves sports. In other words, you don't have to go through this channel and that channel and all that sort of thing on your system. It's right there for you. And you can get pick and choose Major League Baseball, hockey, basketball, some football. Now, NBC and CBS are not a part of this yet. But who knows what might happen in the future. But it does include almost everything else, including the Fox Sports Network, ESPN, all the ESPN channels, all of the all of the networks, the SEC and the AAC, and these, uh, it, it, it's just a, an all-encompassing deal. It is a pretty good idea, but the key is, and of course, it's designed to cut the cable and stop your satellite and all that and have it right there in, in, a, in a streaming circumstance. Is it going to save you any money? The estimated cost for this will be about 45 to $50 a month, but that doesn't sound like much until you have to include it with all your other systems. Yeah, man. And then you're turning out, you're paying just as much as you would have with cable and satellite. Is that a big bargain? Well, 
it is it does make it easier for the sports fans. That part of it I, I completely understand. And the cost factor We'll have to wait and see. Yeah, well, you say 40 <laughs> 50 bucks not a big deal. That is a big deal to me, man. That's oh, a couple no, no, records. No. Yeah, along with the others yeah. on, on the streaming, no, to, that's no savings prices. at all there. No. None. And you have to have the others mm-hmm. because the sports app does not have the local channels. At all. Yep. Well, just keep those rabbit ears. That's what I do, man. Bears had a pretty big test in Northern Iowa last night. Tell me they got the dub. No, they didn't. They got a loss, ended a four-game winning streak. Bears were going for five straight wins. And Northern Iowa wins by a score of 72-65. to Close game, and Mike, it was close. These teams are very evenly matched. It was a good game. Could have gone either way. The deciding factor, there were two of them, deciding factor was a run that Northern Iowa got all teams have runs during the game. And this one occurred about midway through the second half. It was a 9-1 to run, and the Bears could not overcome that down the stretch. The second factor was a brilliant move on the part of the Northern Iowa Panthers and their defense. They knew that the Bears forced their game inside and would score from in the paint, score underneath. And Missouri State can do that. They had the great athletes. Except Northern Iowa packed that area underneath with some big guys and really stymied Missouri State. 24 points in the paint is all the Bears had. That's all Northern Iowa had, too. 24 points in the paint. But they also hit nine trees, and the Bears could not match that, nor the run. So it's a tough loss, 72-65. Missouri State is home to play Indiana State, and they're they're good. That's a number one team in the Missouri Valley. Bears play them on Saturday afternoon. Hopefully they can get the dub there and get back on the right track. Uh, what about the Tigers? they get their first win yet? No, they oh did not. Oh, my gosh, this, man. Is, this is really developing into a, a painful almost, situation almost up in Columbia. Well, the fact is that uh, Texas A&M is just really just a moderate team. They're, they're not very good at all. They're just, and also ran in the SEC. And they go to Columbia and beat Missouri 79-60. Missouri simply cannot sustain any consistency with their attack. There were a couple times in the game where Missouri fell behind but made rallies and got back into it and made the games close and then ran out of gas each time, and that's when Texas A&M took over. Aggies win it. Missouri is now 0-10. That is right, 0-10 in the Southeastern Conference. Have several more games remaining in the regular season before the postseason tournament comes up, but they're going to have to play in the play-in round, and that's tough. Yeah, probably going to be a little shake-up in Columbia after this season. You, you wonder, because this is only Coach Gates' second season up there. I think he probably gets another year. Yeah, hopefully, man. That's this a tough, 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 tough year. All right, uh, you're not a lot of guys have had this chance to get to, to reach this coveted milestone <laughs> before, but a third basketball coach has done it. Who was it? Interestingly enough, the first one to do it, Mike Sashevsky at Duke, did it several years ago. It's 1,200 career wins. Now, Tara Vandiver, who is the longtime Stanford University women's head coach reached it last week and surpassed it. She has, I believe, it's 1,203 wins now to be the all-time. Last night, Gino Oriema at Connecticut also got his 1,200th win. Connecticut, a big winner over Seton Hall, 1,200 wins for really one of the great coaches in America. Oriema doesn't necessarily fly under the radar, but he's not an overly demonstrative individual either. But he has taken the Connecticut Lady Huskies and made them kind of the New York Yankees of, of women's basketball. They're having a good year this year. They don't consider it great. And yet they have 20 wins. That's how good Connecticut is. They also hold the all-time record for consecutive wins, which is 111 straight. But last night, Oriema, 1,200 career victories. How many more in the offing? Who knows? It's a lot of wins, though, man. A lot of wins. Ned, you have another win, and I will see you tomorrow.